Welcome to lesson 4.7. Now we're going to move away from the prisms and we're going to move into the area of cylinders. In this first lesson we're going to get you to develop a formula to calculate the surface area of a right cylinder. So before we can do that, just like we had to do rectangles and triangles, let's take a look at the area of a circle. Back in grade 7 we did the area of a circle and we found out that the area is equal to pi times r squared. Okay. Now, in order for us to do this, we had to know what pi was, and you had to memorize that. So we know that pi is equal to 3.1415926533, dot, dot, dot. And we can't put all that in your calculator. We could use a pi button, but some people would use 3.14, and some will use the pi button. So what we're going to do is we're going to have everybody start and use the same thing, so all of our answers, when we mark them, will actually come out to be exactly what we expect them to be. If some people are using one thing and other people are using others, it won't work out. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with pi, and we're always going to use pi as 3.14. Don't use the calculator button. Just put in 3.14. So to find the area of this circle, we have a radius, and we are going to be using 30 millimeters here. So the area is going to be 3.14. We're going to multiply that by 30 millimeters. So 3.14 multiplied by 30 gives us 2,826. Remember, we're in little tiny millimeter cubes here, so it's going to be very small. Or sorry, it's cubes, squares. All right. Now, wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. I forgot to square this. So we got 3.14 times 30 squared. Now, 30 squared is 30 times 30. Remember that. That's my 30 squared. Don't go 30 times 2. So we end up with 900 when we do this. 900 times 3 is around 2,700, so we know that our answer is actually correct. Now, the second thing you could do is you may be given a circle, but they may not give you the actual radius. They'll actually give you the diameter instead. Now, remember that the diameter is nothing more than the formation of that big D. That's the diameter all the way across. So in order to get a radius, the radius is only halfway across. All right? So that's from the middle out. This is your radius here. So we have to take our diameter and divide it by 2. So we're going to have to find our diameter, i oh, sorry, find our radius by taking our diameter and divide it by 2. Now I'm not going to expect you to actually show me this, I'm just going to expect radius to appear, simple as that. So again, area is equal to pi r squared, area is equal to 3.14, multiply that by 10 squared. Now remember 10 squared is 10 times 10, that's 100. And 100 times 3.14 is 314. We're working in meters, so it's meters squared. So there's the review of the actual calculations of the surface area. Note that when the radius is doubled, you get the diameter. And when the diameter is cut in half, you actually get the radius. So we're going to start with some very simple stuff first. We're going to create a net for this particular um, cylinder. Now, I don't want you to actually to actually create it on, on paper and cut it out. I want you just to draw it. So I'll give you a second to see if you can draw this net. Okay. Now, if you think of a roll of paper, okay, here's my roll of paper, say uh, uh, it's like a roll of, uh, uh, you know, bounty. As you peel off paper, right, you get this piece of paper that comes out. Now, this paper goes all the way around the outside of that roll. So if you think of it as the label of a soup can, that shape is a rectangle when you would peel it off and lay it flat. Now, on the top part of your roll of bounty, well, you're assuming there's no hole in it, you're going to have the cylinder top. That's a circle. And then on the bottom, you're going to have the bottom of it. So there is your cylinder. This one here would flip up, this one would flip down, and this would curl back and wrap around to give you your cylinder shape. So there is your um, net of a cylinder. Now, in our particular one, we've got a couple of things I've got to add here. So I'm going to take off what I just did here. Oh, those. We know our radius is 4 centimeters, so put in this. 
radius is equal to 4 centimeters. We know that our height right here is equal to 10 centimeters. And we know that the bottom also has a radius of 4 centimeters. So our goal is to find the surface area of the cylinder. So breaking it up into its parts makes it a little bit easier to work with. So if you turn the page, we're going to start with the label. Now remember the label is um, rolled off of that particular uh, cylinder we started with, kind of like a, uh, a roll of paper. And as you take it off, right, it becomes a rectangle. Now, before you unroll it, the beginning of it is right here. When you pull off the full circle, you get one distance around the outside. The distance around the outside of a circle, we refer to as the circumference. And there's a formula to calculate that. Just to find the circumference of this, this would be pi d. Now, when you lay this circular part out flat, it's going to be right here. That's the part that was wrapped around the top of the, the side of the cylinder, the soup label. So pi is 3.14. The diameter, we go back to our drawing, it was actually a 4 centimeter uh, radius. That means our diameter is 8. And then, that's pretty easy, 8 times 3.14 is 25.12. So what we've just figured out here is that on our rectangle, this distance right here is 25.12. Well, we have to find the area of that rectangle, so we need to know what this distance is right here. Well, that's fairly simple, because if you think of our cylinder, that distance is the height of the can. And our can, if you go back to our, our, to our, our cylinder, our height was 10 centimeters. So moving along, that means that this is 10. So to find the area of the label, we know the length times width. We've got 25.2. 3.12. We're going to multiply that by a height of 10. So my area of the label is 251.2. And of course, we're working in, I think it's centimeters, isn't it? Back up. Uh, yeah, we're in centimeters. So this is going to be centimeter squares. Okay, so now we have the label. What's left to do now is the bottom and the top. Now, the bottom and the top are circles. And we know to find the area of a circle, you go pi r squared. So this is 3.14 times the radius. Now we check your diagram back here. We found that our radius was 4 centimeters. So this is 4. Now remember, it's 4 squared. Now 4 squared is 4 times 4. And that gives us 16. So we really get 3.14 times 16. And 3.14 times 16 gives us 50 by 0 0.24. Now remember, on our cylinder, we had a circle here on the top. We also have a circle on the bottom. So our cylinder's got two circles. So we have to take that surface, that area, and multiply it by 2, and that gives us 100.48. So the last thing we have to do now is put these two pieces together. Our label was 251.2, and our circles were 100.48. So you take those two together, you get 351.68. And of course, we're in centimeter squares. We're doing surface area. So take a look at it, rewind it, and look at it over and over until you get the idea of what you're doing here. Okay, turn the page. Here is another example. What's the surface area of the following cylinder? The first thing we need to do is to find the label. And before we can find the label, we need to know what the circumference is. So that's our first step. I want you to do that. Circumference is equal to 3.14 times d. That will give you an answer here. Then I need you to take and find the area of the label, okay, which is going to be length times width. You fill in the two numbers, and that will give you the area, the total area of the label. Over here on the circle, area of a circle is pi r squared. Remember, we're going to be using 3.14. Your job is to finish off the question and give us an answer right there. Okay, so pause the recording and finish off this question.
All right, we're back. So, first thing you have to recognize is that on top of this hockey puck sort of shape, it's got a radius of six centimeters. So, in order to use a diameter, this six has got to be doubled to be a 12. So now, 3.14 times the six times two, or the 12, gives us 37.68. Now, that gives us our length, 37.68. Our width is going to be how tall it is, and that is five. So, 37.68 times 5 is 188.4. Let's go over to our circles. Now, area is equal to pi r squared. We have a radius, which was 6. So we can put that in there. 3.14 times 6 times 6. Remember, 6 squared is equal to 6 times 6. So that's 36. So that's going to give us 113.04. Now remember, there's two of them. One on the top, one on the bottom. So this is 226.08 with your calculator. So to find the surface area, you're going to take the 188.4 and add that to 226.08. It gives us a total surface area of 414.48. Now, our units, go back and double check. We're working in centimeters. It's an area, so it's centimeters squared. Again, go back and look at it if you're not sure how I did it. All right, here's uh, another one. A farmer has a huge gas tank in the shape of a cylinder on his farm, and he wants to paint it. The, ga the tank has a diameter of 3 meters, a height of 4 meters. The tank is sitting on the ground. What is the exposed surface of the tank? Round your answer to the nearest tenth of a meter. Okay, so let's take a look at, just like we did before, we need to find our label. So I need you to do C is equal to pi D, and then you're going to be using area is equal to length times width, and then you're going to use area is equal to pi R squared. So I want you to pause, um, sorry, pause the recording and complete this question. All right, so first thing, what is our diameter? It's 3 meters, so our circumference is going to be equal to 3.14 multiply that by 3. So my circumference is going to be 9.42. Now, that 9.42 is my length. My width is going to be how tall the tank is, and I believe it's 4 meters. So my area um, of the label, or the distance around the outside of this tank, is 37.68. All right, now let's go do the top and the bottom. Well, if you take a look here, it says that the tank is sitting on the ground. If it's sitting on the ground, that means you can't get to the bottom. The second part, to give you a little bit more help, was I wanted the exposed surface of the tank, the stuff which is out to the air. So you can't use the bottom. So in this case, since this is on the ground, you can't get access to it. So we only have one circle this time. So pi r squared, your area is going to be equal to 3.14. We had a diameter of 3 given to us, which means our radius is going to be our diameter divided by 2. So we had 3, so 3 divided by 2 is going to be 1.5 meters. Now remember, that's going to be squared. So when you're done this, 3.14 times 1.5 times 1.5 is 7.07. Of course, our surface area calculation, 37.68 plus 7.07. Adds to get you 44.7, and we are in meters squared this time. All right, take a look at how I did it. Watch it over again if you have to. Okay, now, you probably have realized that we've got the surface area of the label is a formula. The circle is also a formula. Well, if you have these two circles, and we have a label and a circumference, we should be able to take and put all of this together, and we can. So let's start with the area of the two circles. Since we know the area of a circle is pi r squared, and there's one on the top and one on the bottom, all we have to do is take our pi r squared and multiply it by 2. That gives us our circle. Now, because we're working in radiuses, um, there's a couple of variations on this. We can, uh, this is in radius, so I'm going to stay in radius for the second part. This is pi d. All right, times heights. So this becomes pi d h. But d is two radiuses, so it's really pi 2 
r h and we normally put the coefficient out front so it becomes 2 pi r h which is right here if you want to change that you could have 2 pi r squared you really can't do anything about that because you got to square the radius but you could go pi d h instead and just take the pi the radius and and the, the 2 and combine them to make a d it's up to you how you want to do it but in most of the formulas i give you I'm going to give you everything in radiuses, so you stick with one. So let's take a look at this works for our last question. We had an answer, which was 44.7. So this is what we need to find out. Does this equal 44.7? Well, you have a calculator, so this is where it's going to be kind of nice. All you need to do is take this big, long formula and start putting in the numbers. Pi is 3.14. The radius was 1.5. Let me double check that before I screwed up. Uh, radius is, yep, yeah, it was 1.5. And that's going to be squared. Plus 2 times pi, which is 3.14, times r, which is 1.5, times the height, which was, uh, what do I have here, 4. This is actually wrong here. This is supposed to be a 3, by the way. Okay, so now that we have that, stick it in your calculator. Does 2 times 3.14 times 1.5 squared plus 2 times 3.14 times 1.5 times 4 give you 44.7? And you will find out that it works perfectly. So when we're doing surface area, you are allowed to use this formula, this formula, oh, sorry, a substitution and answer, if all you're asked for is a surface area. But you're going to get questions, and this is why we had to do the other way, where pieces are missing. What if it's an open tank, right? What if it was an open tank? You didn't have a top, but you had a bottom only. What if it was a piece of pipe, which has open ends, and you just have to do the radius? Or sorry, do the, do the, uh, the label. There's a lot of different variations here. So knowing how to do all the pieces is an advantage. But... Let's not be silly. If we can use a formula to speed ourselves up, let's use it. So if you read right here, it says you're allowed to use the formula when the total surface area is requested. However, you have to know the parts because often you only do parts of the cylinder, like the label or the ends. So I need you to complete the following assignment. If you have any questions, please come and see me or watch the video over and over until you get it. And we will see you in the next lesson.